ball is on the port side, and that way the ball doesn't hit up at the top. Well, and also the track, that the little uh, fair lead is off center of the track to the right. So it's designed, so you want the sail to be to the left of the fair lead, so you go in. Um, oh, more time. I'm sorry. Some, some people, uh, with the vat intention, um, I basically found that I don't want it super, super tight. Because if it is, then the, the sail has a hard time coming, you know, it gets inverted on the jive and stuff. So I just have it just, just to get the wrinkles out. And you'll know pretty quickly if it's too tight because the thing just does not pop. You know, same thing with the top one. to the knot, whatever you use for the knot, that that is your lightest, lightest air setting. So you never have to worry about having it too far eased off. I think in this particular case, like this is way too tight, um, personally. Um, I generally like to start with uh, the bang, so it's just it's got a little teeny bit of spring like that. That to me would be like my base setting, my, my loosest. And that still gives plenty of pro available for the rest of it. But I think and the problem is here with this knot here, we need to, to move this up a little bit. So we have to be able to do what, he, what he's done here. And you know, things like this, um, they remind me that um, we're a relatively new class, but we really, really need to be aware of staying with the class rules. So, um, you really want, before you do anything like this, you really want to check the class rules that are on the website and see if that's uh, something that's permitted. If it's not permitted, then don't do it, right? Um, so, so that's that. Okay. Um, I know it sounds pretty obvious, but um, you really want to hide it all the way to the tippy top. I tried experimenting because I thought, like this strap thing, I thought, oh, well, maybe if I ease the halyard down a little bit, uh, um, then I don't, you know, then I don't have to fuss with this mushroom, but it's not good. You really want to hire it all the way to the tip. side that it goes into the slot, then it's inside the strap. If it's not, if it's on the outside, it tends to pop out. And I had that happen to me, and it is a bear to get up. This bow is really fine. When you're out sailing, you do not want to have to be climbing up. You know? So definitely keep it on the inside. like that and then this halyard tail is kind of neat it's kind of stretchy so what I do is I give a little bit of attention on it and then put it into this cleat here and the idea being that when the mast bends it still stays behind the mushroom so the halyard doesn't slap when you're going along a little something that I like to do when I'm launching or whatever if I've got it is I push this back and that way it doesn't get damaged if I'm stepping yeah. on the bow and then swing it out when I'm sailing. Yeah, whatever. Um, I really like a wind indicator. I use mine at the top. And it's not for upwind sailing, it's for downwind. It's for the angles, right? And this boat, because it accelerates so well, reaching angles are really, really crucial. So um, having a wind indicator, I think it's just Do you just vital. use like an Opti one for the top? Yeah, yeah, I just, and, um, you, if it doesn't fit, you know, right in the thing, I just wound some electrical tape 
around it until it fit in there. I just jam it in. Super wow. easy. I see. Uh, the, the, you probably notice it's got two cleats. It's got one cleat here for the rudder. And then there's another cleat back here. Okay? Um, I found that my tail is long enough. What I do is I wrap it around here. And then I take the tail and put it into there and it just kind of holds it out of the way. One thing that I've done to the charter boats, and I really recommend that you do with your own, is to make sure that this is snug. Nice and tight. This is from the old laser days, right? Laser sailors know this, but uh, it's really helpful to have it nice and snug. All right. Uh, some people, they put electrical... Go ahead, Doug's going to do it right now. They put a band of electrical tape around that Just to make sure. sure. You tape your cunning hand, though. Yeah, we've never had that come out. No. Nah, I just have a few of it. I've had it come out right here. I had it come out on me once, and uh, yeah, it was a drag. Bungee right and there. Oh yeah, but I think I think they allowed that. But, uh, yeah. Do you see the white bungee on the mask? Okay, I'll put it down on it. Just like in the laser or anything else, you want to make sure that your rudder is all the way down. And don't use a line to do that. Push the blade down by hand and then take up the slack, right? Because that puts a lot of strain on everything. Um, yeah, that's basically that. Um, uh, again, a lot of you guys have sailed these boats already a lot, but I find that I adjust my alcohol the least, then my vang, then my, but the most adjustment is the cutting hand. I play that an awful lot. And take a look. I want you to, I want to go to the leech here. So, you see the leech, how it's, how it's cupping up now, okay? Watch what happens. Because we all know that the Cunningham moves the draft position fore and aft, okay? But now watch how the top opens up when I put on the Cunningham. See how the top opened up? Not going to release it. Watch, watch how it springs back. That it's an immensely powerful depowering tool. Okay, the windier it is, you have more you have on that cutting hand. Okay, and uh, if the video camera wants to come around here to the side, you can also see what it does to the shape of the sail. And basically, what I'm doing is I'm looking at that horizontal seam right above the second back and the bottom. Okay, and what I'm shooting for is the point of maximum depth to be at about 50% or 45% depending on how much breeze there is, okay? Now, when we bend the mast, take a look. Okay, first off, uh, who wants to give a guess, hazard a guess, if the mast is zero and the leech is 100, where is the point of maximum depth right now on this sail? About 40, okay. Now watch what happens when I bend the mast with the vang. Tell me where the draft goes. Does it go back or forward? Where did it go? It went back, right? So I use my cutting ham and notice how it drags it forward. See how it's gone forward? And notice how flat the sail has gotten, right? So these things kind of work hand in hand. When I put on the bang, the draft tends to scoot back. So if it's if it's windier, that allows me to put on some more cutting hand to, to drag the, the draft forward. Generally speaking, when the breeze picks up, the draft tends to scoot back, so we have to really put on the cutting hand. Fortunately, this sail responds very nicely, so it's not like a laser where you just crank the crap out of it because you have to. This sail responds beautifully to the sail trim, but it does require then you to adjust it, okay? And especially with the seven rig, it's not a super powerful rig in the first place, and it's a very bendy rig, so you're adjusting things quite a bit, all right? But the outhaul is the least adjusted thing. I really don't, I don't play with that too much. Downwind, I definitely use it off to get it, you know, nice, lots of depth, 
but then upwind, you know, maybe die with on again. Look up at a decent sail with decent cloth on a rig that actually adjusts. You know, it's just for this old laser sailor. It's just a dream. You know. And again, in the, um, on the website, there's kind of like a tuning guide, and they have rough rough settings for your outhaul, and we've got all these wonderful numbers everywhere. So it really helps you kind of come up with some base settings. And that those are great things for you to be putting into your notebooks, right? You know, sailing upwind, I found that having a pilot at like eight when it was really nuking was really fast. Right? And my alcohol I had set at 10, you know, or at 12 or 14 or whatever. Right? So reproducibility is really important. So that's why I just again I love that the book comes already with all the markings. So it just makes it easy. Just go by numbers. Right? Because I think okay, great. Mark at Massapog you sailed with an awful lot upwind with a lot of wrinkles in the uh, luff of your sail. Because it was light. Uh-huh. Yep, just just trying to get the draft to, to scoot back. Okay. You know? And uh, yeah, when the breeze comes on, I have to pull pull some Cunningham off. But in the lighter stuff, for sure, I, I will uh, sail with some wrinkles. Yeah. And you know, I don't get overly concerned that there are wrinkles or not wrinkles. What I'm doing is I'm looking at the shape of the sail. Like right now, the draft is really far forward. It's it's you know just below the A there. I'd say we're at about 25, 30 percent. That is way too far forward. Okay. So. Use my Cunningham as much as possible. Look at the difference that made. You see? Get back to 50. And I got wrinkles. Okay? Okay, whatever it takes. If I've got to have wrinkles to get my draft back to 50 or 45, I'll take wrinkles. Right? But then as the breeze picks up, I definitely don't want to have wrinkles because take a look now. Now it's back by the E. You know? So then I want to pull on the Cunningham a bit. Now that's right forward. Um, I understand, like this boat here is one of the newer ones and it has chalk cord for the bolt rope. Wonderful. Which really helps ease the cutting gear. Right? And something I found is like um, when I'm rounding the weather mark, is I, tr I get a whole bunch like this and then I just kind of do that to allow enough slack for the thing to run. Just from a durability standpoint that a lot of people don't think about is do not, like between races, let your sail luff. Sail around. Because the cloth has a resin on it. You see these cracks? That's where the resin is broken down. The resin, the sail is woven. And it's strong in the direction of the threads. Okay? But diagonally, it'll just go Okay, and stretching. That resin provides bias stretch resistance. When the resin breaks, the sail just stretches. That's why sails go bad, it's because the resin breaks. Okay, so anything we can do to prevent the resin from breaking, we do. So you'll see me, is, uh, between races, my Cunningham is off. And you'll notice I sail around all the time. I don't let my sail just fly. Because it destroys a sail. Absolutely destroys it. When you roll the boat, roll the sail, roll it from the very top. Don't fold it over at the back because that fold becomes a crease. That crease is a crack. The crack destroys the resin and destroys your sail. Okay? So that's just one of my little pet peeves. Alright? So that's that. So the boat's really, really simple. Oh, oh uh, some people like to tape this. Not a bad idea, because we've, we've all experienced uh, this coming off. Poor, I found poor mine Lissa. on the beach the last time I sailed. What's that? I found mine on the beach the last time I sailed. Look, wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And poor Lissa at, uh, at Wickford, that came off twice? Thanks well, for reminding me, I knew I was for doing something. <laughs> yeah. 30 yeah. knots of wind. Yeah, it was, it was well two.
you don't want to be dealing with that in 30 knots, right? Uh, the stronger the wind, the more important it is that everything be done correctly because the consequences are so much greater. Light air, we can handle anything, but not the breeze. This, some people, there's a lot of friction on the day board. This kind of interferes. So a lot, some people don't, don't want, we don't use it. Yeah, I don't. I generally don't use mine. Of course, if I was by myself or something like that, there weren't many people around. It's probably not a bad idea. And I think that one could do all sorts of wonderful things with that. Because um, currently, you, you hook it to here, right? Which is kind of a pill. What I might do is make get, oh, excuse me, um, is make a longer one and make a loop. So then it can hook to the loop and then it doesn't stretch, you know, it doesn't affect this. Because right now, it's pulling there and it makes it hard for me to grab this, you see. But if it had, imagine if this was longer and I had a loop and it was tied to here, then this loop would be fine and the, um, and the shock curve would be pulling on something else. So that's a little innovation that I might do to mine, but it's just such a beautiful line and everything I do. They really use beautiful quality wine. There's very little that you have to do to the boats. Okay, great. Any questions? Any other ideas you have to share with the group? No? How do you write the boat? Because I know there were some ah, that's a great size point. yet. <laughs> um, I find anyway, and you guys tell me, but I find it almost always flips to windward, uh, downwind. Okay? Um, and coming from the laser, I'm used to much heavier rig. Okay, and so when the boat uh, is capsized, or when I'm getting up, there's so much more momentum and the boom's so heavy, I can climb up here on this side, to windward side, and everything's fine. But on this boat, you climb up and the rig's so light, the boat just flips right over on top of you again. Okay, so there's two things you can do. One way is to grab the main sheet, pull it, and, and then go. So it's like a water start on a, on a uh, windsurfer, okay? Or, again, I might want to have a hand on it, but you can climb up in the back, maybe the easiest, right? Less likely to capsize, but you gotta be quick.